Okay guys, just a really quick review of uh, my latest Hot Toys pickup. MMS number 275. It's the John Blake, Jim Gordon and Bat Signal figure. The uh, Bat Signal. Okay, so I'll just give you the uh, dimensions of the box quick. It's uh, 52 centimetres long. With a width of 37 centimetres and a depth of 18 centimetres. Okay, so I've just taken the uh, top cover off, placed it over there, and you're greeted by this slip cover uh, with the uh, artwork uh, taken from the uh, film, of course, Dark Knight Rises. Uh, looks like a um, picture of um, Gotham uh, at night. Uh, Looking up and all that, uh, maybe uh, during the um, the siege period at the end and all that, when uh, all the prisoners are released from Blackout Prison by Bane. And you get to yeah, and you get to this uh, clamshell in, which is standard for all Hot Toys. Uh, I've already opened the figure a few days ago, so it's a little bit in a mess right now. I'll just uh, make another cut and get uh, that clamshell in. Okay, so here's a look at the inner tray uh, with the uh, figure taken out, the bat signal taken out. A uh, few more little um, plastic trays. This is uh, some of his accessories. Uh, they're the files for uh, Lieutenant Gordon, uh, Commissioner Gordon rather. This is where the cuffs went. Uh, a couple of extra uh, clips. Uh, his watch and his torch and the gun of course. And uh, this is uh, where, the, um, where his belt went and the walkie-talkie on the top, so all housed nicely as per uh, Hot Toy standards. Instruction manual, uh, might come in handy. Uh, yeah, there's the remote control, uh, switches on the light up feature of the bat signal. Uh, the obligatory wrist pegs, by figures and hands. Um, three extra hands for uh, Gordon, and these are uh, plates, extra hands, so one, two, three, four, five. Just got his um, little belt in there as well, uh, plates belt. Um, I found uh, it worked better once you had the um, tactical belt on um, to take his main belt off, so you can choose to do that or not. A little uh, do not eat little sweetie things. Uh, I think they'd uh, do something with uh, condensation or something, so the uh, figures um, don't uh, dry out or something like that. Uh, yeah, so um, all these uh, loose bits of plastic just went around the figure. I tend to keep them, you know, if I'm selling figures on, uh, I, I like to keep as many of the, um, you know, little plastic things as possible. You know, I've, of course, you still uh, sell the figure as like used as soon as um, you've brought it out of the box. But you know, just um, I, I tend to hang on to them anyway. They're only going to lie in the box anyway. So and there's where our Gordon's glasses went. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, so here's the figures themselves. Uh, Blake, uh, John Blake. Uh, I think he becomes a detective later on in the um, in the movie. Doesn't start out as that, but I call him Detective John Blake for the time being. And uh, he's Commissioner Gordon, of course. And uh, yeah, so. Um, Two great figures, uh, uh, Joseph uh, Gordon Levitt, uh, played uh, uh, Blake, of course, and um, you know, probably uh, a secondary character in the uh, film, obviously, to um, Batman and uh, Catwoman and Bane, probably they're the main antagonists, and uh, Gordon's probably a secondary character as well uh, across the whole films, but his importance is uh, much more than Blake, obviously, because he appears in all three movies. Like just at the end, just pop him off his uh, stand. Some figures I have uh, standing on their stand, some I don't. Um, I thought these looked pretty cool on the uh, Dark Knight um, stand. There it is, just for the nameplate as well. Uh, there's no uh, problems at all with this figure standing though without the stand. Uh, the, um, the joints are really nice and um, really stiff as well. Uh, not so stiff that you can't move them, of course but not so loose that uh, the figure has a uh, real difficulty standing by itself at a stand. The same with Gordon. Yeah, so even on this really um, sort of like smooth table, 
uh, there's no problem at all with the figure standing as you can see the underside of the shoes is easy, even detailed and uh, you know that probably helps it as well the um, the grooves in the shoe like that to uh, get some grip if you've got really smooth shoes on these figures sometimes they really have a trouble standing with it like this figure but it's not doing too bad at the moment on this surface that just testifies how well it stands uh, unaided if you ever do get um, difficulties with that though I find sometimes you can sand down the bottom of these shoes just a little bit some rough sandpaper that helps with the grip with the figures so yeah really nice and uh, you know I've just got it in um, a basic stance you know you can pose these figures up pretty much how you want uh, the articulation is as good as can be expected obviously the clothing uh, sort of like disrupts uh, posing abilities uh, to a certain extent especially with Gordon with uh, the heavy jacket but you know I think it's really well tailored you know in person it, it just looks like a perfect little one six jacket uh, not sure what it's supposed to be some sort of, it looks like some sort of uh, military um, influence jacket um, like, a bit like an M65 jacket I suppose but yeah, that's sim in his commissioner gear, of course. Which you've seen predominantly in uh, in the Dark Knight Rises. That's how. I mean, he does appear in other guises, in other um, outfits uh, throughout the movie. But you know, they've gone for that particular look, and you know, I think it works really well. The glasses, which are different in design to any of the sort of glasses that you got with SWAT Gordon. For information, they're a little bit bigger. The yeah, frame is a little bit bigger and the uh, lens inside yeah they look really nice and uh, yeah so um, just be careful with them pretty uh, delicate and all that and uh, just a close look at uh, Bane um, Bane uh, Blake rather <laughs> and uh, so his tactical belt you know not a lot in the way of um, straight out accessories I suppose so all the, the accessories are what he's wearing so that could cross over to outfit as well uh, I don't know what else he could have come with really apart from a secondary outfit you know during the end of the movie when he's in um, uh, I think the uh, the hospital looking for um, Gordon I think it is he's got um, he's wielding a shotgun and all that so you know I don't know like, apart from a secondary outfit he wears later on in the movie a bit more of like a detective outfit, casual outfit. Little description on the um, badge, uh, City of Gotham Police uh, Department, and then uh, eighteen founded twenty, so eighteen twenty founded. So that's a nice little detail, great little detailing on the under shirt there, GCPD, John Blake. If you can just make that out, a little name tag and uh, around here on the side as well little badge there uh, I got from the uh, city, uh, city of Gotham Police Department 1820 and the little PD on the uh, on the shoulders there so yeah, a little walkie talkie which just slips up there just attached there so yeah really nice figure as I say, I don't know what else they could have brought to the party in terms of accessories for that guy. Oh, Golden, really, I mean, he's a light figure and all that. Um, but he does come in this set, so... Here's a look at the um, bat signal. Really well designed. Really um, fluid action in movement. So it's really um, been really put together well. By, like, no knockoff company and stuff like that. Yeah, great range of movement. You can go right over like that if you want. Uh, the underside is where the batteries go. It's free AAA batteries. Got some rechargeable batteries in there at the moment. And it's a really bright light. Um, I've already showed it on a couple of previous videos. Yeah, really bright light. So um, there's just a switch. Uh, it's a three-way switch. Uh, I think you go up one and um, that puts on uh, so it can be operated by the remote control and then you put it up again and then it just is full on like that uh, the mirrored background at the back there which in increases uh, the brightness of it 
and there's a little sensor there which you can use for the um, remote control so that's pretty sweet uh, just a little um, lever post there um, to add to the um, uh, decoration of it I guess and that's nice that comes separately you just um, stick it inside there so yeah really nice uh, so yeah I'll just give you uh, my general uh, thoughts on the figure now Okay, so hopefully uh, the camera uh, does the sculpt uh, justice and all that. Uh, I saw the uh, early um, photos from Hong Kong. Some of the Hong Kong uh, bloggers, they always uh, get the figures first and post pictures up. And you know, I was, I was quite uh, let down by the first pictures that I saw. It was maybe the uh, darker light in that maybe they used on their photos. And uh, it didn't show the figure in a good light at all, I thought. So yeah, but um, I've got the figure in hand, and yeah, it's not it's not 100% there, uh, but it's not a bad sculpt at all. Um, uh, they've got his uh, quite distinctive um, ears, <laughs> pretty pretty much right, they're a bit sticky out, um, and um, you know yeah, the proportions are good and all that. I can't really put my finger on why it's not quite there. I think maybe the painting work maybe makes him look a little bit older than what he should be, um, like he's pretty baby faced in appearance I think the actor um, Joseph Gordon Levitt so you know maybe it's um, it is that um, figure but you know from maybe 10 years down the line but you know all in all you know as I, as I say I mean Hot Toys, Hot Toys makes a rod for its own back really by um, producing all these great head sculpts and um, you know as I say I mean it, you know you can't really pinpoint what's wrong with it but you know, it's not 100% there, as I say, it's not one of those hot, stop, hot toys um, sculpts that you just go, wow, you know, that that is the figure all over, you know, and um, yeah, so there's something not quite there about it, but you know, as I say, if the standard was just not set so high by, by themselves, you know, you'd have no problems with it. Uh, they're moving along here to uh, the Gary Oldman sculpt, which, you know, I don't think you can knock this whatsoever. It's amazing. It's amazing the likeness. So it was amazing with Swap Gordon. Um, that was one of the best sculpts I thought uh, when I got that figure in a couple of years back. And then looking at this guy, I think it's the same sculpt. I'm not a hundred percent sure, um, but there's definitely um, been paintwork application. You can see where um, that, that you've made. They've made him more lined, and he definitely uh, this head sculpt definitely looks older. Than the SWAT Golden version. Um, if you got both versions and you got them both in hand, you can you can see the um, differences immediately. Even though it might be the same sculpt, the difference in the paintwork and the texturing just um, makes it look uh, really completely different. And it's amazing how they can do that with just um, paint applications, hot toys. But yeah, really good. And as I say, the articulation is fine for what you want it to do. So there's no problems there whatsoever. So yeah. Um, head sculpt wise, you know, you can't really knock these figures at all. Um, you know, they're going to look uh, great in your display, and uh, you know, I can't see any other company. Um, you know, no, no other company really comes close to the Hot Toys. Um, you know, apart from like Custom, you know, Masterworks and M and E and stuff like that, and they produce stuff at such limited runs compared to Hot Toys. You know, no big company. Is um, touching hot toys at the moment, in my opinion, anyway, head sculpt wise and paint application wise. I think that's how most people set them up side by side uh, with the um, bat signal in the middle. So, yeah, cool. I'll just uh, show you a comparison with uh, uh, SWAT Gordon um, to show you what I'm going on about. And um, I'll tell you uh, what I think you should do if you're thinking about buying this figure. Okay, so here's the two figures and um, the two uh, versions of Gordon. And uh, you'll probably notice immediately when you get these figures, there is um, a little bit of a noticeable uh, height difference. Uh, Swap Gordon being um, noticeably a bit taller. Uh, I put that down to mainly that he's wearing boots. And, um, you know, it's not such a massive difference that it's, um, you know, going to, um, you know, dissuade from the figure and all that. But yeah, just a uh, look at the sculpts. And... Um, you know, I, I'd best describe it as they could be like identical twins, um, but one's had a bit of a harder life than the other sort of thing. Um, you probably won't be able to see it so much in the video, but I can testify that this this 
sculpt. It, it, it does look, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's the same as that sculpt. Um, I'm sure it's just a reused sculpt, but the, the paint um, work on it is just totally different. And um, it's better as well, and uh, it's better paint work as well. And you can see just in the last two years how um, lots of those have come on. There's a little bit more grey uh, inside of the hair, which um, would be um, appreciable, you know, after uh, like four or five years gap between the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. Um, a bit of a complaint was that they could have they could have um, like kept the same um, face sculpt and changed the hair. I, I do buy that because his hair is slightly like I suppose um, wavier at the front, a bit more of a centre part in in the Dark Knight Rises compared to the Dark Knight. So yeah, that that is a small criticism, and you know you always feel that Hot Toys is maybe getting away on the cheap when they just uh, reuse stuff. But you know I can testify that it does the paintwork really does make the two figures look different and uh, and yeah if, that, if it's your only chance to pick up um, a Commissioner Gordon if you're into your Batmans and all that Commissioner Gordon from um, the Nolan trilogy then you know try and pick this guy up um, separately I'm sure he'll be pied out from this set because you know I don't think this set I mean it's a couple of years too late really I mean it's like people have moved on from Nolan's Batman films and you know it's all about the Avengers now and the new Batman film of course of Ben Affleck and all that and Batman um, versus Superman and all the Justice League films that are going to be coming out over the next few years so like this is going to be forgotten really I mean as good as they were at the time you know things just move on and um, uh, if if you're thinking about getting this set, I'd say hold out for about three to six months and wait for the price to drop because usually these figures I find the Hot Toys figures they find they find their 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 price range in about three to six months uh, and they either go up or they go down and I I've got a feeling I might be wrong but I've got a feeling that this figure is going to be a bit of a shelf warmer and that people are going to be trying to get rid of them. Uh, as all the re all the other uh, hot toy stuff comes in, especially the um, the uh, Star Wars um, stuff, all the Avengers stuff, which is going to be big, and then as I say, they've got all all the Marvel superhero films that are going to be coming out, which are all the Justice League stuff. So you know, I'd say hold out and wait for the prices to drop on these things. Um, ordinarily, uh, hot to hot toys do tend to. Um, drop in price from the retail after about three to six months generally uh, some don't, some just go straight up in price um, a lot of the Ironmans do because they're, they're very popular in the Far East markets um, but yeah my advice would be hold out hold out for this figure set and probably wait for prices to drop and um, yeah pick them up in a few months time when um, retailers are trying to get rid of them uh, so yeah, um, a nice little set if you're into your Batmans, it's, it's a must buy I think because it pretty much completes um, your, your Dark Knight um, or Dark Knight Rises uh, collection. There's a few uh, uh, missing figures obviously, uh, most notably Ra's al Ghul that they haven't made. Uh, Hot Toys keep on saying they're going to make him and uh, nothing happens. It might be a Toys for Fair exclusive this year, who knows. Um, Toy Fair exclusives usually are announced. Uh, around about um, San Diego Comic Con time, so probably in about a month's time. So we wait for that. Um, but as I say, yeah, a really nice set, and I think it's kind of like a couple of years too late um, for the interest, and really, because the interest has waned um, in this series. Um, and as I say, I mean, uh, no matter how good the films are and stuff like that, you know, um, it's just, you know, stuff is just like dispensable these days, you know, and, you know, the, the movie's going to be forgotten, you know, in about three or four years' time, people say The Dark Knight, what? Uh, you know, so that's just the way it goes. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, yeah, pick them up by all means, but my advice would be um, hold out for uh, three to six months um, for, for the uh, set to um, find its level in the uh, market, and then um, retailers will probably be trying to um, chuck them out. Um, to make room for new stock and stuff like that so yeah thanks for watching all that guys uh, I tried to make it as quick a review as possible I don't think I've managed it but <laughs> there you go I wanted to um, do the figures justice as I do all my figures so yeah um, 
Might get hold of um, Robocop, Battle Damage next week. Uh, hopefully, um, he's uh, being poked around by customs at the moment. So, um, hopefully, they won't be poking around with it too for long. And I'll get him sometime next week. So, thanks for watching that, guys. And uh, yeah, uh, check out um, the other videos on the channel and all that. And uh, yeah, keep on collecting.